So, I'm here with Katie Rose, and Katie is a singer, a conductor, a composer, and a writer based in Crystal Palace. And here we are in Crystal Palace Park. And Katie loves singing and she loves helping people sing, and leads a number of choirs across London, and co directs the Mass Choir Fundrise Razor Sing for Water, which happened just this weekend. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and Katie's latest album, Flame, was released in July. Um, so we're going to talk a bit about that. Um, but the, the first question really, Katie, is what's inspiring you at the moment? <laughs> it's lovely. I just want to say thank you for having me. Uh, it's just really lovely to be here and I'm sure the project you're creating is going to be really valuable for people because I love this idea of reflecting on creativity throughout the year. Uh, what's inspiring me at the moment is, well, we're outdoors now. We've had to be outdoors a lot in lockdown. Um, and, I, and nature is continuously inspiring me. I'm continuously inspired. And many of my pieces of work are based around elements, whether it's water, trees, fire. Um, so, I'm, I, yeah, for me, nature is continuously uh, inspiring. And then also the human voice and singing and what we can do when we claim our voice, the amazing amount of creativity that becomes available when we claim our creative voice is my whole life's work really. So that's an ongoing inspiration. And then, you know, life is itself inspirational, isn't it? You can, anything can happen that can inspire you. So yeah, and that's the spontaneity, spontaneity isn't it? Lovely. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. And, and tell me a bit about what inspired Flame. Oh, well, that actually started out something called Seeds of Passion. Um, in 2015, I was working on that, and it was this idea of, I don't know if you know the myth of Persephone, um, but in a nutshell, basically, she's the daughter of the Earth Goddess, and she gets snatched and taken away down to the underworld, and uh, her mother has to try and get her back, but because Hades kind of tricks her into eating six pomegranate seeds, she has to stay in the underworld for six months of the year, which is our winter and, and autumn, and then she can come back in spring and summer. So it's interesting we're talking about seasons. So um, I had this idea for an album that was kind of showed all the seasons of love and the fact that sometimes you're going through the underworld, and sometimes you're, uh, you're going through spring and summer, yeah. and that, you know, uh, love and relationships can involve all sorts of things. Yes, joy, <laughs> ecstasy, bliss, all that lovely, happy stuff, but also sometimes despair heartache, betrayal, whatever, all those other things that sometimes come into our human relationships. So I wanted to create an album that somehow reflected all of that whole journey. And then this idea of passing through a fire came later on when I found myself in lockdown, really. And I'd always wanted it to be connected with the element of fire. And then I just got the idea while I was running for the lyrics of the title track. So that's, that's how that came, really. I just found it's passing through the fire of love and that that even the tough stuff even the tough stuff of whether it's lockdown whether it's whatever's going on if we let ourselves embrace that it's transformative somehow. fantastic yeah Thank you. oh that's wonderful and as you say it really ties in with uh, with the, this idea of the seasons and and how we we work through different inspirations and in different seasons of the year so, um, tell me then a little bit about your creative process, because you talked then about having the inspiration as, as you were out running in the park. Yes. <laughs> How do you get from having the having these sparks of ideas through to a finished album? You know, wh wh where does the at what point do you sort of sit down, and, or do you sit down? Do you just do it whilst you're walking? I don't know. Um, well, I. Can. When I thought about this, I feel like I've got sort of six stages. So there's the spark, like you say. The spark can come from anywhere or anything. Like you say, it can just drop in, in the shower, on a walk, you just get an inspiration. Or sometimes I wake up with a song in my head and I think, wow, I want to do that song. Um, so there's a spark. There's always that phase, which is always joyful and, and exciting. And then there's an exploring phase where you explore well, do I really want to do this and, and shall I and what could come out of this and maybe you have to do some research or maybe you've got to find out the lyrics of the song maybe you know there's some exploring phase and again that can be quite light but then at some point you've got to have to decide to commit to the idea mm. because <laughs> once you've been through this process enough and you're laughing because you know yeah. um, you know you're going to have to ground the idea and grounding the idea is where all the nuts and bolts and the hard work goes That's on. The hard work. That's the hard work. And you know you're going to have to put in hours and hours and hours of 
you know, whether it's over your laptop or whatever your medium is, over your canvas, if you're a visual artist, you're going to have to put that time in. Um, and somewhere, that's the grounding phase, the nuts and bolts phase, and somewhere in the middle of that, there will always be what I call the chaos phase, <laughs> which is a phase where you just go through a phase where either there are external obstacles or internal obstacles, and, and that can be something goes wrong in the process, something breaks down, um, or you yourself start really doubting yourself and going, why the hell did I ever think I was going to do this? <laughs> Who's going to want to listen to this? Who's going to want to, you know, like all this stuff can go on. And um, I've learned to, to that, that that phase can be very useful because, again, it's a test. It's a test to say, do you really want to follow this through? Is this really the idea? Sometimes in the chaos phase, you might find something that means you need to change something or go slightly in a different direction or junk the whole thing out. That's unusual. But, uh, and um, so there was useful stuff in that phase, but it's usually pretty uncomfortable, to be honest. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> she knows. And I think in a long-term project, it can come around, can't it? It doesn't often, sometimes it doesn't happen just once, you know. You go through phases of being really into the project and then really not, not liking it and wishing you'd never done it. <laughs> um, so once you've passed through the chaos phase and then you get back to grounding and the nuts and bolts and then hopefully you get towards completion. Completion is a lovely feeling. There's a lovely relief. Um, I think we can sometimes also procrastinate about completion because we can be scared of what comes after completion, which is the really scary bit, which is sharing it with other people. If you've made something as an artist, you've been very happy on your own quite a lot of the time just making this thing. Maybe you've got a little bit of feedback or maybe you've called in some people to collaborate, but you have generally shared it with a lot of people. Um, and then you've got to share it. So that's the final stage. You've got to go out there with that thing, which has been a bit like taking your baby out, basically, and going, oh, don't hurt it. Do you like it? <laughs> Do you like it? Don't hurt my baby. Yeah. And, um, and that can be terrifying, to sure. be honest. That can be terrifying. But also, it's, of course, you know, no art, art is supposed to not be. It's not in a vacuum, is it? So it has got to go out there and meet the world. And all these unexpected, amazing things happen when it does. Um, and so, yeah, so those are my phases of creativity. Fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> no, I recognise a lot of those. <laughs> and, and yeah, that, that final bit when you're taking it out and sharing it with the world. I mean, it can be wonderful. Yes. It can be fantastic. There's nothing nicer, is there, than, yeah. than when you hear people say, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that's just just fantastic and yeah. that's that's the, the reward for all of the hard bits it <laughs> is yeah and when people say you know like oh i played i played your music when i was in hospital and it really soothed me and things like that that's when you go wow okay you know i would never have dreamt of that when you're just making it you're just making it you've no idea you put obviously your good intentions and you hope that it will be of service to people and help them and enjoy and they might enjoy it but then you all these other unexpected things happen which are really magical so yeah fantastic yeah, yeah that's lovely um I mean, as you, you mentioned we're, we're outside now um yeah. doing this interview you've been outside a lot even with your choirs you've been singing outside because yeah. people haven't been able to, to be inside uh, do you have a, a sort of preferred place when you're in the creative work process it, i mean some some people say oh, i've got to be in my studio or I've yeah. got to be in this place or, or that place and, and uh, you know I, I can write on a train if I have to or a plane or yes. something. Yes. <laughs> How about you? Do you have favourite places? Um, it, it depends what it is, I think what part of the thing. Like ideas, getting ideas that can happen anywhere, you know, and I often find they do drop in while I'm walking or out, you know, or as you say trains and planes. I think transport is a good place for ideas and and especially if you're in a writing phase, it's a great place because I think that thing about transport is you're between places and people can't necessarily get hold of you in the same way. So you're kind of in this kind of limbo space and I think it you're sort of slightly detached from your the rest of your life for a short phase. And so that's when, again, I think it makes a bit of space for ideas. So I always have a notebook and I have my voice recorder on my phone. That I have been known to sing ideas into my phone in the bus. <laughs> it's normally so noisy nobody notices. So. <laughs> so that's where you can get the ideas. But I mean when it comes to actually making things it's mostly at home. I mostly make stuff at home and 
I always have these three things that I want in a home, which it has to be light, I have to see trees, um, yeah, and it has to be quiet for recording music. So, of course, yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. my light sanctuary. So I, I will get ideas from everywhere, but I, I, I love being at home. Even despite lockdown, I still love being at home creating things. <laughs> I, I guess a, a kind of linked thing um, is um, going back to the seasons again. Yeah. And I don't know about you, I find... Um, and this was actually how I thought of the creative year was I find that springtime I'm suddenly absolutely bursting with ideas yes um, and then uh, in the summer I'm kind of maybe weeding a bit I'm deciding what am I going to commit to what am I going to feed you know what am I research and so on yes come the autumn you've got to get your head down and start yeah. writing you know yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. the hard work um, and then, then there's this sort of period over the winter how does the seasons affect the way that you create? Do you have a similar kind of thing? Yeah, I can relate to a lot of that. Mm. I think, um, for me, I was born in the summer, so I'm a very summer baby, and, and it feels for me like summer is my peak time in terms of feeling great and wanting to be more outward. Yeah. So that would be where I'm more, it's more like the sharing phase, you know, where I'd be mm -hmm. aiming, and often there's lots of festivals and performances in, in normal times. So. Um, so really, summer feels like a time when you're really quite out, out there, connecting, being outward, taking work out into the world. Um, certainly my album, I just launched that in the summer. Mm. Um, and it's my birthday in the summer. So I'm just like a yeah, summer baby. I love taking things out then. Um, and I tend to have a lot of energy then. Uh, but yeah, then autumn is always back to school. It is, I do feel like a squirrel. I'm gathering nuts and, <laughs> and being very busy. Busy, busy, rustle paper, everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots of collecting and lots of um, very industrious. And also a lot of, I um, have a lot of, in the choir, I have a choir calendar that I work around. And then in autumn, there's quite a lot of different celebrations, particularly as you move up to Christmas, which is always, a bit of a car crash if you're a choir leader really because you'll just get asked to do carols on every street so corner rigid. yeah um <laughs> so yeah so that's a very busy time and i find january january for a long time was my worst month of the year <laughs> and i used to dread it it isn't so much um um but it can be uh, i find it it can be quite a downer. <laughs> and what I've learned to do, though, is to go, no, this is the time for retreat. As I say, my run up to Christmas is often bonkers. So it's actually a time to retreat. It's not to put pressure on, um, but it's time to do inward things. It's time to be inside. It's time to get the house in order. It's time to be quiet, not to push too hard on, uh, um, because you may not be externally very productive, as it were, mm. but internally you might be more productive and it's sure. more of a time to reflect on to be self-reflective and maybe do some inner work really and then spring like you say woo! suddenly there's this kind of yes yeah, things start picking up pace and inspirations and new ideas so yeah, yeah. so i relate yeah. a lot to what you say that's yeah. great that's great yeah and something that I was, I was in your lovely welcome choir oh. for, for a while when I, when I was living in Crystal Palace and, uh, and that was fantastic. And I really liked the way that you chose songs that reflected the seasons. So obviously yes. Christmas, we, we had Christmas songs and carols and so on. Um, but uh, that, that, that seemed something that uh, almost seemed to come, I, I suppose it's something you've done a lot of, you know, picking the, the songs that are right for the season. Yes. For, 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 sharing with us yeah that's mm. right like at the moment it's autumn so i'm doing harvest for the world because it's the harvest time um uh, so yes and there are lots of winter songs when we get to winter there are winter songs as well as christmas songs um so yes i am very and as i say i do really work with i really try to work with this awareness of nature and the choir that you mentioned came out of crystal palace transition town which is all about sustainable living how can we take care of the planet so I try very hard to stay in tune with these cycles because I think we are cyclical and we do pass through those cycles. And, you know, sometimes you can, that doesn't mean it might externally be summer, but you might be going through a creative winter. Maybe it's a bit barren, but you have to trust that, you know, things are going to come up. Do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, so I think being in touch with what the seasons are doing for us and that can also include things like the cycles of the moon and just being in touch with those things which our ancestors would have lived by religiously because they had to in terms of if you were farming, if you were working the land, you would be very, very subject. And I think that's one good thing about lockdown. It's made us much more aware of 
nature and our environment and the need to be taking care of our parks and our green spaces and be out in them more mm. um so i think yeah for me it's really important that 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 we honor that we are not just i think that the western capitalist lie is that we're just these machines that pound on through like it's just a linear kind of progression you know like R regardless uh, yes. of what's going on yeah. outside yes <laughs> yeah and actually we're not we're cyclical Mm. And that means we have cycles and we have, sometimes we need to go inward and not be as out there and productive. If I was in summer all year round, I'd be exhausted. Of course. Yeah. So yeah. you have to have those different flavours of our experience to be able to honour them. And there needs to be more, uh, more, more understanding of the need for rest and inwardness, you know, um, which is, again, it's very taboo in our culture, but actually the the need for rest, the need for recuperation, the need for reflection. Um, and then, yeah, for sure, then you can be super productive. And, and those cycles can go, as I say, they can pass through, they're passing through them all the time. And I see it as a bit like life, death and rebirth, really. It's constant, that's a constant. And anyone who tends a garden knows that, don't you? If you have a garden, you know that things are, you're always planting things. There are always things that are starting. There are always things that are on the on the wane, <laughs> not doing very well, uh, but they might actually come back up again a bit later, you know? Mm -hmm. So that, again, I try to live with that awareness and be aware that other people are going through their version of that. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's really profound. I, I, I completely agree with the, you know, being able to, to, to let yourself rest when you need to rest, be out there when you want to be out there. Yeah, that's lovely. So we're in squirrel season now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you working on at the moment, Katie? Um, well, as you said, I completed my album, so I'm sort of sharing that. It's in the sharing phase, so really just getting that out there has been a really big, big deal. So, and especially because it's been a long lapse over lockdown of not being able to perform, so um, getting that out into the world has been amazing. As you said, I've just finished one of my year-long projects, which is Sing for Water. It's a mass call fundraiser for WaterAid that just happened this year. So that's now just had its big burst and its sharing phase, let's say. So then that will go back to seeding, reseeding itself and coming back round. So we'll have to do that kind of reflection process now with it. Um, uh, and then my choirs. Yeah, the choirs are now really in full-on squirrel season for, <laughs> for three months up to Christmas. So I've got this yeah. crazy... Especially after it gets through half term, I just feel like I'm standing at the, it does feel like I'm looking down a slalom, you know, and I just have to hope that I just get to the bottom <laughs> without the bottom breaking my legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the choir you mentioned, the Welcome Choir, which is very local to here, um, you know, they've just started their term and it's lovely to see everyone again and start singing these beautiful songs. And then I have my ongoing groups in hospitals and care with carers and, 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 you know, kind of well-being groups, which are really about supporting people's well-being. And of course, we need that all year round. Definitely. So, lots, lots of busyness going yes. on at the moment. Yes, a huge amount. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely back to school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, now, so we need to tell people where they can find your album, oh, first of all. <laughs> so that's, uh, would that, your website be the best place to start for that? Yes, yeah. so that's the roswindow.org. Yes. Yes. Right, yeah. roswindow.org, um, and uh, go and have a look at all of Katie's activities, that's right. um, including the album Flame, which is fantastic. I absolutely love it, it's, uh, and your voice is just so extraordinary, it's so, so lovely, I've always enjoyed it. You. thank you very much and um, yes I hope to have some when I get to my more oh, nesting oh, phase have some nice quiet nights curled up with some of your books and it's been really <laughs> nice oh, and if you. people want to find me on social media it's uh, Katie Rose Window is generally where I am um, you know, I know it sounds strange but the Rose Window was this whole idea of you know it's the Rose Windows in Cathedral they're multifaceted and you can look through all different elements of them and they're kind of like a, a mandala you could call them um, yeah so so yeah so, it's, so that's why the, the this idea that you can look through different parts of the website and go to and have different things and so if you want to come and join a choir or you want to you're interested in writing or if you're interested in having some one-to-one -one work or you just want to come 
music, so it's just this idea that you can look through the different parts of your bow's window and something will be there for you. So, uh, so come and find me wherever you want. <laughs> That's great. Katie, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and lovely hearing about your creative year. Oh, thank you for inviting me. It's just lovely and wishing you best with this project. It's wonderful. And all your wonderful books, of course. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Start to fall.